This week we are going to be painting the iris flower. The iris flower has been something that has been pretty intimidating for me when I was a beginner but at the same time it's also a flower that I've admired a lot. Now in this video you are going to see how we are going to let the watercolour do all the work for you. At the same time, depending on which stage and where you are at in your watercolour journey, I want to take this time to again remind you to create an intention so that it frames your entire art practice and also gives you the space to realise that at whatever stage your art is at, it is allowed to take up space. I always make sure that I put the date down on my work and I sign it like an artist because that gives me a story to relive again next time when I relook at that painting. I'm excited to show you my process. Let's dive in. Hello and welcome to my channel again. I'm Gillian, better known as Crafty Fox, and today we are going to be exploring the use of watercolour inks. So what we mean by watercolour inks, they are basically concentrated watercolour that come in bottle form. All of them are dye based, so we are not going to be using so much pigments. I'm going to be mixing the use of some of these inks and interchange them with some of my tube paints which are already in the palette. And the flower that we are going to be exploring today is going to be a really wild one and that is the iris flower. So I felt like the iris flower gives you a lot of expressive petals and all those layers are going to be very fun to explore using bleeds and blends with watercolour. So to start off, we're going to use wet on wet. So I'm going to be pre-wetting the paper first and then I'm going to be dropping down ink and then we're going to be working a little bit on water control as well as trying to manage the bleeds. Um, so we're going to be working through this flower which is from my reference book, The Flower Colour Guide. As we work through the painting, I want you to keep in mind that the whole point of this tutorial is for you to enjoy the process and while you learn something from it, it doesn't have to be necessarily from the video. You could learn something from your own experience as you're working through your own painting. Perhaps you feel like you've gone too fast or used too much water or should have used more paint or a bigger brush. So these are lessons that you would acquire as you're going through a tutorial. So I'm hoping that while you're going through this painting, you also learn to be kind to yourself and also pay attention to some of the things that you're saying to yourself that could result in discouragement so to just hold on to that and then to also remind yourself that this is a journey and a practice that takes time for you to go through now even for me as i'm doing this i'm also questioning myself because i haven't really painted the iris very much but i figured that i'm going to use this opportunity to just show you what i can do on the paper with whatever knowledge I have of the flower and I also want to showcase to you that I might go through some struggles along the way and that's fine. So on my setup, I've got my paper, my paints and these are tube paints from Sonalier. I'm also going to be using my watercolour inks or concentrated watercolour which I've actually put in a pill box. So this is actually a pill box. I like that it comes with a cover so I'm actually able to cover it because I don't want my kids to be dipping into it and ink can be very staining so it's not very good to have on furniture. So I'm going to be using that. My reference book, two cups of water and then I've got my 100% cold press cotton paper from Ash. Um, make sure you've also got your paper towel because we're going to do it, be doing a lot of wet washes. The brushes that I'm using are from Silver Black Velvet. I'm going to be using a cat's tongue brush, a flat brush and another smaller flat brush. So they're in different sizes. This one here is in one inch and the other is in half an inch. I also like to use a very big white flat brush to just be able to cover more areas to wet an uh, entire surface. So it's really up to you. Use whatever materials that you have 
Don't let that hinder you from trying this watercolor tutorial out. So I hope that you enjoy. So let's start off by figuring out our paint palette. So the colors that I'm going to be choosing are pretty vibrant. I like to use Wild Rose and I'm going to be using Mahogany which is a very nice plum purpley brown shade. And my favorite color is actually Tangerine which I use a lot. So I'm going to be mixing these colors on and off together. I've already have them in my palette but I'm going to be refilling them so I'm going to just add some of them down back into my palette and because I'm so familiar with this palette I kind of know where these paints go in this in these spaces and for watercolor inks you don't really need very much it's uh, very concentrated so a little goes a long way so I'm just putting in a couple of drops at a time in each then I also have some remnants which I will be spraying down with my spray bottle so that I activate them, wet them and you can see the moment that I spray them down it kind of gets activated and starts moving that's because dye based paints are of smaller molecules which means that they move more rapidly in water so they would create some really nice effects as compared to cube paints which are pigment based and pigments are of larger molecules, they are also heavier so they tend to settle down to the bottom of the paper instead of travelling with the water depending on how much paint you have on your brush. So let's begin. I'm going to be um, putting my, my paints aside and I'm going to be starting. So I've also got, I've got my plate with me in case I like to mix colours and I'm just going to set that aside because there's not very much space in this frame um, and I want to make sure that you get to see my reference photo and every time I dip into my paints and the mixture and the consistency those, so these are things that you want to remember so now the thing about the iris flower is that when you look at it, it really looks like a blob and it's really hard to figure out which part of the flower you should start with and usually we would always go from left to right because that's how our brain reads things we go from left to right so I'm going to do it similarly I always usually paint from left to right as well so that's how we're going to break it down we're going to identify some colors um, and a lot of the colors are some of this warmish plum purple we've got some yellow in the middle and you know we've got some lighter purple kind of pink shade and we're just going to keep all that that in mind, starting with the outside flower first, going one petal at a time, basically creating the shape. Now the thing about the shape that I want to notify you is that it looks like a number 8. If you think about it, it's a number 8 and it just has these two wings at the side, right? And the number 8 is not really symmetrical, you've got this part that's smaller and it's got a bigger head with the number 8. So then we identify that the shape on the top is going to be bigger than the shape at the bottom. So let's start with that and then we'll go in with the wings later. We see that one side is bigger than the other and we're just going to create that as well so that you get more movement. And the thing about flowers is that it's not symmetrical so you really want to also be able to kind of play around with shapes, pull petals longer, shorter and create some of that. So I am going to go in and create my petals. I'm using a white brush and I'm just going to create my eight which is, you know, I'm just putting in a wet wash and I'm not being very precise about it. I'm just kind of creating where I want it to be roughly. I'm going to be painting this flower pretty big um, because I want to get all of that expressiveness and ink flowing around let it travel right so i've got created a smaller shape on the top and a bigger one on the on the top sorry i meant a bigger one on the top and a smaller one at the bottom so i'm just going to get my colors and i and you know you don't have to paint exactly like the reference photo so this color here is mahogany and I'm just going to put down very light wash of mahogany so I'm adding water to it so it's very light and 
capturing where the center is, I'm going to keep in mind that I want my center to be somewhere here and I'm just going to go add it down. I'm leaving the center empty, kind of starting with that petal on the side first. I'm wriggling my brush, giving it some texture. I'm going in with darker pigments also so that you get a variation. And the thing is, while it's still wet, it's the time to capture that opportunity of movement. I'm just wriggling my brush around and pushing it, pushing the edges. I'm diluting the paint down as well. So you see, so far I've only used one color. And while the paint is still wet, I might go in with another color. So I'm just going to pull here to create some of these veins that I see. And the thing about using inks is that it's very staining. So it doesn't, it's not very forgiving in that it's hard to kind of lift, especially if you are looking to lift your painting. So while it's still wet, it's very nice to, you know, kind of go in with these bleeds and blends. And because it's still moving, you get these feathery kind of edges. I see that there's some yellow in the middle there. So I'm going to pop in a little bit of yellow. But I don't want it to be too stark, so I'm mixing that yellow with my earlier colour and straight away what I get is this kind of orangey shade. And that's okay, I'm just adding it in. Maybe I really want some really stark yellow to be in the middle here. Okay, so while I've got that shape in, I'm going to go in with just water. I'm going to wash my brush, totally wash my brush. So we're going to paint with water right now. And painting with water means that we're just going to go in with water. And while I go in with water, I am going to create some of these bleeds where the water is just going to paint for me and I'm creating these petals. I'm basically creating movement around the areas before and when I'm doing that I'm also pulling the paint around so you can pull it and then dry it and pull it and dry it and straight away you get to see some movement okay now I want to differentiate some areas so I'm gonna add my rose right now and my rose, I'm mixing it again with mahogany so that it's not so stark. And you can see it's got this really nice bright color. I'm just adding it on here because it looks like there's a petal in front here. And I want to showcase that. And these petals are so fiery. There's so much movement. Give that movement. Use the watercolor. So I've got that eight shape that I was telling you about before, right? And I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm going to add a bit of darkness here. And now my paper is starting to dry. So this means that I have to be really careful if I want to add in paint because I don't want my brush to be wet and then create these blooms, right? And um, I do notice that there are some folds here. And this is where maybe I want to pull out that superhero cape petal out here.
So I'm just wriggling my brush around and creating some of that. I'm going to pull out the cape a little bit more. some of my favorite tangerine in here and wow you see I just took a little bit and straight away the color is so bright and if I were to have taken it from my palette and putting it in that would have been a huge blob of orange which I would not have been able to pull out because it's inks right so I'm going to water it down and you can see that by watering it down, the color changes and it's a lot more manageable color. I'm gonna mix it a little with this. It gives me this really nice kind of coral purple shade and I'm just going to drop it in in some spaces. And we're not gonna overdo it too much. I'm going to try and add in a bit of darker pigment of this in here in the gaps to see what happens. And you can see that straight away there's this pop, pop of colour in there. I'm kind of happy with where this is going at the moment. It's very, very fluid looking. Um, and I've got my eight, but I realized that that superhero cape here seems to be merging into here. So I'm going to try and define that a little bit better. And I'm going to wait for it to dry before I add in more details and layers. But on the other hand, I'm going to try and create the other cape. And I'm going to create it in a much lighter tone just to try it out so I've got it out here now I'm gonna go in and add the color since I have got the shape down gonna let it be kind of tickle it and move the paints around so it gives it direction because I want it all to go towards the center and you know the trick right you can also draw out these veins while it's still wet using the back the handle of your brush that's if your brush is pointy if it's flat, then it's not possible, and I'm gonna do just that to add a few vein marks for some of these, and I'm just going really rough. So this part has already dried, so it doesn't really work so well when it's dried. So you want to keep that in mind, do it while it's still wet. So when I'm going to go into layering, this is where I'm going to go into my paints from my palette. So I'm adding some of these um, blues actually, kind of to indicate the shadow within the flower.
some shadows on the sides. I'm going in with magenta, permanent magenta from Sennelier. So these will give me the detail that I need. I'm starting to add in some yellow and as you are layering with yellow, something that you want to take note of is that yellow when placed over purple can result in brown. So keep that in mind when you layer some of your colors over existing colors at the bottom so that you don't get muddy colors, especially since yellow and purple are essentially complementary colors. Now I'm also going in, adding in some veins and I had applied a clean layer of water over that part. So you are definitely allowed to use wet on wet again so that you can get nice blurred edges, soft edges in your painting and that's what I'm doing. At this point of the painting, you will be watching me add layers to the edges of the petals and also adding veins to give the flower more definition. I'm not adding every single vein or painting every single edge because I'm keeping it loose and I'm also being mindful that if you add certain details in certain places, you're going to have to be consistent which means that you will need to add the same detail throughout the painting and I'm also pulling in other colors like blue, adding in darker values of magenta and kind of creating the cohesiveness throughout the painting, ensuring that I've got enough of my mid-tones and my dark tones. So when I zoomed out, stood up and looked at my painting and compared it to my reference photo, I felt like there was a part that was missing. So I then proceeded to do a wet on wet and basically blended in the colors. It's of a very light value because I want to give the viewer the illusion that it's a petal that is far behind but at the same time I still provide enough details to show veins. If you've gotten this far to our painting, thank you for joining me today as we are coming to the end of today's session. I am focusing on the center of the flowers now, kind of giving it depth and also creating all those shadows around the centers. Thank you for spending your time painting the iris flower with me. I hope that through watching my process, you've also not just learned a couple of things that you can add to your practice, but also learned to enjoy your time spent creating a flower on your own. Now, if you've got any questions, comments, or you would like me to cover anything in particular on this channel remember to feel free to drop it in the comments below i look forward to interacting with you and also hearing about your experience as you were watching this video of me painting i hope you enjoyed painting along with me as much as i did helping you to simplify the iris flower and painting the essence of it while allowing the watercolor to do the job i'll catch you next week as we dive into roses a flower that i've got a history with i'll see you then <music>